I was driving over the mountain behind the church, and it occurred to me that our devotional passage today is in Matthew chapter 21, and it takes place on a mountain. Uh, it's not the mountain that Cecil Ashburn goes over in Huntsville, Alabama. It is the mountain uh, in Israel called the Mount of Olives. And our story today talks about the triumphal entry. Every time I take a group to Israel, I walk down the mountain with our group, if they are physically able. If you look down below me, uh, that's the location of the church, way down there. Imagine walking to the church from here. Uh, the Mount of Olives is not quite this high, but that's what happens today in Matthew chapter 21. Jesus walks in a triumphal way down the Mount of Olives and into the city of Jerusalem below. So let me read it to you. Uh, Matthew chapter 21. The scripture begins in verse 1 saying, When they approached Jerusalem and had come to Bethpage, to the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples. This is what he said. Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied there with a colt. Bring them to me. If anyone says something to you, you just say, the Lord has need of them. Wouldn't that be great? If you needed a new car, and you went on to the new car lot, and, and you looked at the salesman and said, the Lord needs this BMW. <laughs> and he says, well, all righty, here's the car keys. The Lord needed a donkey. And the Bible says it was actually a colt, but they brought the donkey with the colt. Mark's gospel tells us this was a colt which had never been ridden. And so, having grown up in Texas, I've, I've talked to a few ranchers in my life, and they will tell you that nothing is more unruly than an unbroken colt. And so here we see the sovereignty of our Creator. Jesus, who could suspend the laws of gravity and walk across the sea. Jesus, who could calm a storm with a word, could also calm a wild colt upon which no one had ever ridden. And that's the first miracle in this passage. Although the reason he's doing it, according to Matthew, he is in fulfillment of a prophecy. Verse 5 tells us that, that he did this to fulfill a prophecy. You see that prophecy in the Old Testament in Zechariah 9, uh, verse 9. Matthew always is careful to point out that Jesus fulfilled every Old Testament prophecy about himself. In this story, before I go on, can I tell you who I relate to the most? In this story, I, I, I relate to the donkey. <laughs> I really do. Because we're not talking about a graceful horse with a mane blowing in the breeze, uh, long legs gobbling up miles as it gallops. No, 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 no. We're talking about a donkey. Ears that are too big for its head, unruly hair. They make the goofy noises. Yeehaw! In this story, I feel like the donkey. But here's the thing. If there's value in a donkey, there's value in your life. If, if, he could, if Jesus could use a donkey, he, he can use you. Uh, it's a startling thing what I read in verse 3. The Lord has need of it. We're talking about God. We're talking about the Creator. Hey, he doesn't need anything, does He? No, He doesn't. He, nothing is impossible with our God, but He chooses to use you and me to do His kingdom work. So I'm happy to be a donkey in the kingdom of God. Now, uh, let me continue. When I do a selfie, I can see how long I've been talking in my phone. I need to hurry up. And so, 
they Jesus gets on the donkey, but not before they put their garments upon the donkey and and they begin to cut down branches and so they're putting the, the people are putting their clothing their coats are on the ground and they're 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 cutting down branches from the trees and, and placing them on the ground and as they do that as Jesus is coming down the mountain the people are shouting I'm in verse 9 Hosanna to the son of David blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord Hosanna in the highest the word Hosanna means save and that's exactly why he came. But he, the only way to save us was for Jesus Christ to die. And the very people who, on this day who were shouting Hosanna in not very many days would be, would be shouting, crucify him, crucify him. And he allowed himself to go to a cross because that was the way he would save my soul and yours. One thing they did get right on that day, by casting their cloaks upon the ground and the branches upon the ground, this is something the ancient world did whenever they were welcoming a king who was entering a city. And indeed, Jesus is the king. He's the king of all kings and the Lord of all lords. Now, when a king entered a city on a stallion, that meant he was coming for battle. But whenever a king entered a city on a donkey, that meant he was coming in peace. Jesus entered Jerusalem humbly, seated on a donkey, the Prince of Peace who would go to a cross in order to give us peace with God. But may I tell you one of these days, the humble king riding on a donkey is going to become a conquering king, coming again in the clouds of heaven. The Bible tells us in 1 Thessalonians chapter four that Jesus Christ will come again. And here's what's fascinating. When the book of Revelation describes it, chapter nine, 19, verse 11, Revelation 19, 11 says, when Jesus comes the second time, he will be upon a white horse and his name is faithful and true. He came the first time. Uh, on a on a donkey but he's coming the next time on a white stallion he came the first time as a humble king he's coming the next time as a conquering king he came the first time to a manger but he's coming the next time to a throne he came the first time to, to redeem he's coming the next time to rule jesus is coming again next time not upon a donkey but upon a stallion and to all those who know him, he will gather us home. Maybe it'll be a day like today. I don't see a cloud in the skies. But one day, we'll hear the trumpet blast. And Jesus will come. And the Bible says we will meet him in the air. Until next time.